What's going on everybody? Mortem here, and today we are talking some Divinity lore, specifically about Xandalore. Now, one of the games Xandalore does not appear in is Divinity Original Sin 2, actually. However, he is in most of the other games, and is a pretty central figure to the entire history of Rivalon. So what we're going to go over is basically what we know of him chronologically, and his involvement in the said history of Rivalon. Now, Xandalore is a wizard, a true wizard, which is an important distinction, because true wizards in Rivalon are practically immortal in terms of their age. While it's certainly implied that they can be killed, and that they don't necessarily live forever, they can be incredibly old. For instance, by the time Divinity Original Sin 2 rolls around, we know for a fact that both Arhu, who is in that game, and Xandalore are several thousand years old. Now, truthfully, what makes the distinction between a true wizard and just someone who uses magic is left very vague, which is intentional, I imagine. But with no further ado, let's actually jump into who Xandalore is and what we know about him. So chronologically, our first known encounter with Xandalore is actually in Divinity Original Sin, the first one. Now, throughout that game, we learn that Xandalore is what's called a Keeper of the Source, which was a group dedicated to preserving Source from corruption, which, due to the events of that game, we learn that because of a battle between Astarte and the Void Dragon, Source had been corrupted over the last presumably couple thousand years, but we don't know the exact time frame. But Xandalore and a group of others became the keepers of the Source. Now, in Original Sin, Xandalore is the last one. Moreover, he trained two twin sorcerers, Leandra and Akara. Now, over the course of their training, Xandalore became romantically involved with both of them, but wound up being in an actual relationship with Akara. Once this happened, her sister Leandra ran away and actually becomes swayed by the Void, and is eventually corrupted by it herself. And the events of the first game, by and large, are trying to stop Leandra from entering the first garden, so she can help the Void Dragon win the fight against Astarte, thus permanently corrupting Source, and, you know, effectively ending the world. Now, Xandalore attempts to stop Leandra, but ultimately fails to keep her from entering the garden as he is ambushed by Death Knights, which are basically immune to everything. Now, Xandalore is saved by the protagonists of the first game, and he then opens the way to the first garden, and thus the end game, for our protagonists. And he also kind of explains the general situation with Source, which is where we learn that it's becoming corrupted and everything because of this battle. And while Xandalore is certainly involved and important to the plot of Original Sin 1, he is nonetheless almost a bit of a side character in that we don't see him for most of the game until the end, we just hear about him. And you don't really get a chance to talk to him much before the game is over. And chronologically, the next time we see him is actually from the first game of Divinity that was ever made, Divine Divinity. Now, you meet him fairly early on in this game when he saves you from being attacked by the forces of chaos. So the plot of Divine Divinity is simply that the forces of chaos, which are people who work for the demons and their god, Chaos, disturbed the resting place of a divine being, which then marked three people, known as the marked ones. Technically, if you were to look at the lore as it is now, they would be like Godwoken. But the forces of chaos are trying to kill these marked ones because they can, of course, become the divine one and actually stop their plans. Now, as we play that game, we learn that their plans are to summon chaos into the world for what would be the third time, second time physically, but would be the third time his forces have done such a thing, I should say. Xandalore is trying to prevent this from happening, of course. So his goal is to gather up the marked ones, which includes you. He actually saves your life fairly early on in the game. From here, Xandalore goes on to attempt to save the other two marked ones, but is ultimately unsuccessful. And both of the other marked ones wind up being killed. So at that point, Xandalore takes Lucian to the old chambers of the Council of Seven. Somewhere between Original Sin and Divine Divinity, a Council of Seven was formed. We don't know exactly when this happened, but basically this is a council with a representative of each race, including the wizards, who, among other things, have the power to elevate someone to the position of the Divine, provided, of course, they're eligible for such a role. Now, Xandalore from here instructs the protagonist, Lucian, to go around the world and try to reform the Council. Because for the Council of Seven, basically representatives of each race are chosen, regardless of whether or not they know it. 
the gods pick someone and that's the person. So Lucian's job is to go identify those people and reform the council so he can elevate himself to the divine. Now the first one is pretty easy because Zandalore is the representative for the wizards. So you're tasked with finding the other six. Now Lucian is ultimately successful in this, manages to reform the council, thus Zandalore leads the ritual to help Lucian ascend. Now upon completing this ritual, Lucian disappears and Zandalore and the council are attacked by none other than Chaos's direct servant, the Demon of Lies. Most of the council is killed, besides Zandalore and the orc representative Croxy. They manage to escape with the help of Arhu, who was not a representative but was, you know, around. And it takes two months for Lucian to reappear, having ascended to the Divine. But in that two months, it is implied that Zandalore, Arhu, and Croxy have actually led the resistance against Chaos's forces while they plan their next move. Because when this happens, Chaos has effectively taken over most of the known world through a demonic invasion. However, their ultimate goal is to prepare to bring Chaos itself into the world. And when Lucian finally reappears, this is just about completed, where the Demon of Lies is trying to imbue Chaos's soul into a newborn, which would allow Chaos to appear. Because Chaos is, through normal means, barred from entering the world through the acts of the Seven Gods. Now, Zandalore meets up with Lucian once Lucian reappears, and advises Lucian on what he needs to do to prevent this from happening. Lucian is successful, but is unable to stop the soul of Chaos from being at least partially bonded to an infant. This infant becomes Damien. Now, while the pragmatic thing to do would have been to put Damien down, Lucian couldn't bring himself to do that, despite Zandalore warning against this. Because, you know, for all intents and purposes, this child was evil and was marked and it wasn't going to end well. But Zandalore ultimately says it's fine. However, as Damien is growing up, Zandalore is actually the one who senses that something evil is afoot with Damien and he is being taught dark magic. Now this turns out to be true. A member of the Black Ring, which is an offshoot of Chaos's forces, sent a representative, Yagurna, to find and teach Damien about what he really is. Now Zandalore at this point insists that Yagurna and Damien both be put down. However, Lucian again refuses to kill Damien, who he considers his son, However, he does kill Yagurna, which leads Damien to run off, and there's a whole war that goes on. Now, throughout this war, Zandalore remains one of Lucian's top advisors. Now, we know that Lucian, of course, faked his death. What we don't know is whether or not Zandalore knew that Lucian faked his death, because, again, Zandalore is not involved in Divinity Original Sin 2 at all. We know he's alive. We know he lives until well after this but we don't know how much Zandalore knows about these events until later. Because the next game Zandalore is in is in Divinity 2. Now in Divinity 2, we can sort of fill in some gaps. So in Divinity 2, we know that Zandalore at some point came back to Lucian's side. Because if you're unaware, the most likely canon ending for Original Sin 2 is the Purge Source ending, because that ending sees Lucian live, fits in with the timeline, as well as is the marketed ending for the indefinite hiatus game, Fallen Heroes. So if that ever goes back into production, we'll know 100%. But basically, Lucian is present in Divinity 2, and thus kind of has to live through Original Sin 2. But regardless of any of that, we know that Zandalore is back at Lucian's side after Lucian's faked death from Original Sin 2 and before he is supposedly assassinated by a Dragon Knight. Now, I say supposedly here because Zandalore is the person in Divinity 2 that explains that it was not a Dragon Knight that actually killed Lucian. Now, it's important to note that while we, through the benefit of hindsight, know that Lucian was not actually killed at all by this Dragon Knight, but rather imprisoned in a place outside of time by Damien's forces, the world, and even Zandalore, thought Lucian was dead. However, what Zandalore did know was that the Dragon Knights were not responsible for this. And refusing to uh, join the resistance, if you will, against the Dragons and the Dragon Knights, Zandalore became a bit of an outcast and had to go into hiding. Now, Zandalore pops up here and there throughout the game, mostly to just explain things that are relevant to the Dragon Knight. And he also helps our Dragon Knight eventually enter the Hall of Echoes, which is the main part of the main game. And then, in Flames of Vengeance, which was the expansion to Divinity 2, 
Xandalor is the one responsible for saving the city of Alaroth. So at the end of the main game for Divinity 2, Damien actually wins. He manages to reawaken Yagurna from her death through some interesting manipulation that's hard to explain in just a lore video. He's successful, basically, and his army is sweeping through Rivalon and they wind up sieging the city of Alaroth. Xandalor disables a barrier around an ancient wizard's prison to use it and its power to barricade the city of Alaroth with a magical shield that is impenetrable. However, this requires all of Xandalor's concentration. And then Xandalor tasks the Dragon Knight with resolving that situation, which the Dragon Knight does, and throughout that story we see the Dragon Knight successful in ending the threat, however not killing Damien. And then at the very end of Flames of Vengeance, we see Xandalor once again at the side of Lucian, who was freed from his prison outside of time by the Dragon Knight in the Flames of Vengeance storyline. And that is everything we know about Xandalor throughout the timeline of the Divinity series. So, pretty integral figure, involved in quite a bit. He very much so plays the old sage role with lots of wisdom. But there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.